WERAFM, Dallas. Mr. District Attorney, starring David Bryan. Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it shall be my duty as district attorney not only to prosecute to the limit of the law all persons accused of crime perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. In a moment, we'll bring you another case from the farm. The first, a word from our sponsor. Now, here is our star, David Bryan, as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. The District Attorney has two jobs to justice. The other is to protect the innocent. It isn't always easy to tell which is which. This case started in the industrial district, a desolate spot in the early morning hours. What time is it now, Eddie? Uh, Two minutes to two. Uh Hey, look, Fogelson, I'm getting worried about this. You want to go up the river? You want to see me kicked off the police force and go up there with you? No. Then play it my way. All right. Now, come on, Eddie. Pile out. Yeah. We'll be coming around that corner in a minute. How do you know, Fogelson? I know because a beat cop calls the priest. And this is the call box Walt uses. Only them. Whoever answers, don't they know Walt's voice? No, it's a new desk, Sergeant. We've got to time this just right. You take a look around that corner and see if Walsh is coming. Thank you. No, uh, I don't... Wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah, about halfway down the block, Walsh. Yeah, about 30 seconds. Yeah, that's perfect. Now, you keep quiet. 31st Precinct, Sergeant Willoughby. Hi, Sarge. 2219, Walsh. How's it going, Walsh? Got a 707. Prowler. Name's Frankie Lynch. It's a parole violation. You better send a wagon. Right away. Hold on. Here he comes, Fogelson. Let him. We're ready. Get in the car. Jesus. Shut up. Well, officer. Yeah? What's the truth? Well, how long are you keeping? Nothing. Right. I got something that will surprise you, Walsh. Yeah? <laughs> like what? A bribe? No, I wouldn't try to bribe you, Walsh. You're an honest cop. So... <laughs> All right, Eddie, now we can go. Caught killing. They have a pin that's on us. They'll be looking for a parole violator named Frankie Lynch, stupid. Now slow down and relax. I wouldn't want you to get a traffic ticket. The shock might kill you. Morning, Miss Miller. Oh, good morning, Harrington. Chief in yet? In and on the phone. I'd love to get my hands on that Frankie Lynch. No word on him? No. Nope. Said he's being fine, calm, though. He was morning papers? Yeah. Most cold blooded murder in the city system. I saw. He's already convicted, Lynch, without a trial. Trial? Guy's out of state prison for one day after a three year stretch, and he made us a cop who sent him up. Who needs a trial? You better not let Mr. Garrett hear you talking that way. Hello, Harrington. Oh, morning, Chief. You put that call through to the 31st Precinct, Miss Miller? Yes, sir. Sergeant Willoughby's on his way here now. Walsh spoke to him and he called in and said he had Lynch under arrest? Yeah. We got his statement yesterday. I want to talk to him personally. Something disturbs me. What? Do you think Officer Walsh would have arrested Lynch and brought him to a call box without searching him to see if he had a gun? No. He frisked him the minute he caught him. And Walsh wasn't killed with his own gun. It hadn't Lynch had an accomplice, Chief? Well, that's the only... <laughs> What was that? Out in the hall. <laughs> Frankie Lynch, sir. He's in the building. Someone on the loose. I was just coming out of the elevator when a cleaning woman came running in from the staircase. Lynch scared her. Boys from the squad room came up after him. They'd got him cornered. Where? Hearing room at the end of the hall. Well, why don't they go in and take him? They can't. He broke a window and went out on the ledge. Says he's going to jump if anybody comes out after him. Come on, Eric. Who fired those shots? Squad room boys. Lynch fire back? I don't think so. He just pulled it through the window. In here. 
All right, all right, you guys. All right, quiet down, quiet down, quiet down. Right up there. All right. Sergeant, take these men with you. Go right up to the ninth floor. See if there's any chance of dropping a rope over him. Yes, sir. Come on. Now let's see if we can coax him in. Hey, Chief, don't stick your head out there. Why not? He killed the cop that sent him to jail. You prosecuted him, didn't you? Well, you might be next on his list. Why else would he be in the building? Why? I'll talk to him. Mitch! Chief, you get away! You make one move to come out here after me and I jump! Now, that ain't gonna make you any deader than the policeman you shot. A man with a wife and two kids. I didn't shoot him! Well, come out in and tell me about no, it. No! Why don't you miss the garret? If you pull everybody off the floor and then let me talk to him or I'll jump, I swear it! Harrington, let me... Dog, Chief, he's half crazy. Just get out and let me talk to him. Go on, Hank. Oh. Garrett speaking. Sergeant will be talking from the ninth floor, sir. How does it look? No good. We can't even see him. There's a carnass up here. It juts out too far to rope him. That's too bad. They could lower me over in a bucket seat. No, forget it. He might go. Ring the men and report to Harrington in my office. Yes, sir. Take them down into the street. Rope it off. And, and close the door. Garrett? Have you been running away? I've been trying to get to you. I stopped to take me with them, thinking I'd kill one of them. Lynch, I'm in this room all alone. If I lock the door, will you come in and talk it out? No, I can talk from here. I give you my word. But you don't know what it's like to be locked up. I... You, you know what the greatest thing is? a doorknob. A knob that you can buy in a hardware store. But turn it. You can use it to open and close the door. Go anywhere you want, whenever you want to. Lynch, I know how you feel. No, you but... don't. You'll never know. When I, I left the pen just three days ago, I swore I'd never go back. I'd rather die. Lynch, why did you run away when Officer Walsh was shot? I didn't even know he was shot. Not until I heard it on the radio the next morning and found out they were looking for me. But Walsh called the precinct house and said he had you under arrest for a violation of parole. That's a lie. He didn't arrest me. Did you see him the night he was killed? You're hesitating, Lynch. The way a man does when he's fishing for a lie. Yeah, I, I saw him. But we just talked. He didn't arrest me and I didn't kill him. Maybe you'd better tell me what did happen. Well, it, it, it was my first night out of the pen. I, I couldn't sleep. I, I was free. I just wanted to walk around and walk and breathe. But uh, uh, 1 a.m. I got up. I, I got dressed and I went out. Out where? No, no place in particular. I just, you know, wherever my feet wanted to take me. So good. Never know how good. Go on. I saw him about 1.30, it must have been. I was walking down by the factory district. Quiet. Nobody around. Hey, you, wait a minute. Ha what? Turn around and put your hands against the wall. I'm not doing anything, officer. Okay. Now let's get a look at your face. Yeah. Frankie Lynch, isn't it? Yes. Remember me? I remember you. Got you for armed robbery once, didn't I? Yeah. When'd you get out? Just yesterday. Thought you pulled five to ten. I served three. I'm doing the rest on parole. Your parole officer forget to tell you about the ten o'clock curfew? No, I told him. Being out at this hour is a violation. You know that, don't you? Please. Officer Walsh, I'm not doing anything wrong. Would you please believe me? You better tell me what you are doing around just, here. I'm just walking. I, after three years, I couldn't sleep. I just came out here to walk, that's all. Take it easy, boy. I think you're on the level. I am. I, I am. You've got a job? No, not yet. No. Well, bakery needs night loaders. I'll be passing there in a few minutes. Maybe I could talk to somebody. Would you? Would you for me? It's only 40 bucks a week. You used to have bigger plans than that. Yeah, it was before I found out how much a doorknob was worth. Huh? Uh, it was just a, a private joke. I'll talk to the night boss later on my way to ring in. Go ahead, boy. Finish your walk. Boss, you're not a bad guy. I don't think you are either. Not anymore. Hello, boss. Hello, Eddie. How's business tonight? My pool parlor's only open at daytime. You know that, Walsh. They're playing pool, you mean? How about dice and a few other games? Maybe you'd better stop saying things you can't prove. 
We had the vice squad raid my place three times. No evidence, no gain. That's right, Eddie. And we both know why, don't we? Another couple of days and we'll know for sure. Well, maybe we'll all learn a lot in a couple of days. You got off? Well, if it ain't Frankie Lynch. Hello, Eddie. When they let you out? Yesterday, on parole. Parole, huh? Well, drop her on. Shoot a game of Chicago on the house. No, oh, thanks, Eddie. Well, <laughs> I bet the warden will be real proud of you. That's enough, Eddie. Get going. Sure. Good night, you lovely people. You know, you were lucky in a way, Lynch. You learned your lesson. That baby still has his coming. Well, he can have it. Got any dough? Yeah, I got 50 bucks. Compliments of the state. Enough to hold me until I... Until I start loading bakery trucks, I hope. <laughs> I think that'll be real, too. Good night, Lynch. Good night. And, and thanks. Enjoy your walk, boy. I'm glad you came out, please. last I saw them, Mr. Garrett. That was all, and that's the truth. I see. You don't believe me, do you? It doesn't fit in with the other statements, Lynch. But it's all true. Then what are you afraid of? Come inside and we'll... No, Mr. Garrett, no. Lynch, you've been running more than 48 hours. You can't have had much food or sleep. You're tired. And that ledge is pretty narrow. And eight stories above the ground, but I'm staying here, Mr. Garrett, until you know that I didn't shoot Walt. Or until... Well, like you said, I'm on fire. I'll do what I can, Lynch, to check your story. And I'll be back as soon as I can. I'll be here, Mr. Garrick. Here or, or, or down there. This is David Bryan. Before we continue with Mr. District Attorney in the case of the man on the ledge, here's an important message I'd like you to hear. And now, Paul Dick, the attorney. A policeman had been murdered in cold blood next convict. And he stood on a ledge eight stories above the ground, denying guilt and in danger of plunging to his own destruction at any moment. If Lynch was lying, his death might not matter. But if he was innocent, a killer was at large and we had to find him. Meanwhile, in another part of the city... Eddie? Hi, Fogelman. Hey, don't call me by him, dear, but Lynch. Yeah. I understand they're covering the thing with radio and TV and everything. Not so loud, Eddie. Yeah? Where's your equipment stack? I'm basing at the warehouse next door. Why? There's nothing on the premises here. No, I moved everything when you took me on that last trip. On the game tonight, maybe. You know, it's pay night. You're crazy. I... From you first. That's what I've been paying you for, ain't it? Look, bright boy. I'm still the grand jury here next week. Well, so what do you got to worry about? Walsh ain't going to be there to testify. And without Walsh... Some bright ideas about why, Walsh. A lot of bright ideas. Mm -hmm. That jump, huh? Mm -hmm. See you again after. All right, stay back there. That'll do you, kid. Hey, get those kids, Fogarty. Sergeant Willoughby. Yes, sir, Mr. Garrett. Let Fogarty take over. I want you upstairs. Yes, sir. Ah. Waiting. Back to the eighth. Our case against Lynch seems to hinge on where he was killed. Are you? Oh, I'd have no... I'm not looking for a lie, Sergeant. I'm looking for a mistake. Are you certain it was Officer Walsh who phoned in? Yeah. I'm sure. You don't... I never thought about it until now, sir. I mean, you said it was Walsh. Did you... I suppose somebody else might have used that call box, but... But what? Well, only... Only a cop wouldn't... I can't explain it, but... Well, I know. I when you call in, it's not just anybody could pick up a call from them. All right, Sergeant. That helps. Just call from Grand Duke, bringing a record over, but I could see his notes. Fogelson, pending investigation. The 
Was Walsh involved in the suspension? Yes, sir. He was under... What charge? According to the bill, Walsh on three occasions reported gambling in a billiard parlor owned by a uh, Eddie Manning. My squad drew warrants and paid three raids, no evidence found. Walsh charged that Eddie Manning was being informed of the raids. It's officer after all, Sergeant Williams. District Attorney's Office, just a second. Carrington, Mr. Garrett. Right, Carrington. Right, Foreman isn't here, Chief. And get his home phone number and call him. I asked. He hasn't got a home phone. Then just find out if Walsh stopped by before he was killed and asked for... Chief, go on right away. You live near the 31st Precinct, Sergeant? Yeah. Way well, in changing the plain clothes. To look for me about a block. Sir, Eddie Manning. We'll take an unmarked squad. I want to report on Lynch's condition every 15 minutes. It's only 10 cents a cube. No, thanks. Well, a couple of others, somebody to play with. I'd just like to watch. I ever see you around here before? Maybe. I work at the bakery. Hey, you hear about that cop that got shot a couple... Yeah, so I hear. You know, it happened right on the corner of the next block. Shooting. I just missed seeing it. That's so? Yeah. <laughs> I passed him on the street. On the top, and the guy who killed him. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah, that cop was arresting this lynch character and hauling him up to the call box to call for the way. You saw that? Yeah, passed him right on the street. I didn't hear anything about a witness. Did you tell the police about it? Why? They know who's done it. I mind my own business. Yeah. Sure. Oh, boys at the bakery tell me this uh, pool hall isn't your only business. I don't believe everything you hear. I don't. You want anything else? No. No, thanks. I'd better be getting on to work. that night, Foreman? Yeah. Did he back Lynch up? Did Officer Walsh ask him for a job for Lynch? No. No? The uh, Foreman says he went home early the night of the killing. His kid was sick or something. But some of the loaders did say that Walsh stopped by looking for him. And that means Lynch's story could be true. Yeah. It... Oh, here comes Willoughby. Well, Sergeant? I don't know. This Eddie Manning says he saw Walsh with Lynch. Well, that's in keeping with Lynch's statement. I'm going to flush that vice cop poker for him. We don't have much time. Harrington, you try the pool room this time. What do you want me to do, Keith? Show him your police credentials. What? Pretend you're trying to shake him down. If he's been paying Fogelson for protection information, maybe he'll pay you. Use your car. Go ahead. Anything you want me to do, sir? Call radio division for a squad to cover this area. There's an alley behind that pool room. Keep it covered. I'll meet you. Yes, sir. Close at five o'clock. I got a message for you. Yeah, what is it? You uh, you got anything around you shouldn't have? Who are you? Bad, you know. What do you want with me? What are you talking about? Uh, I've got my head with me. You're gonna be raided again. Paul was in trouble with Teddy. Why didn't he come himself? Kippins is up, mate. Now fork over. Let's have the go. For what? Fogel should ever give you information for free. I don't know what they're talking about. Get out and close. Yeah, hello? Holderson, Eddie. What are you calling me for? Did you just send a cop to see me? No. Well, he was here. He flashed a badge. Mentioned you and tried to shake me down. Now, listen, Fogelson. They're wise to us. You pull that trigger, and not me. Oh, shut up. Shut up, you fool. Now, wait there. Wait for me. I'll be over there in five minutes. Fogelson. Fogelson. Quiet. 
Yes, yes. Pull the blind. Call somebody on the phone. Shade on the back window. Right there. Maybe forward. Right there. Maybe forward. Keep your eye open back there, Sergeant. Yeah, we can slip out front now. Shoot. What is it, Sergeant? He shot Eddie. He's going for the cash register. Trying to make it look like a robbery killing. You'll go for his... Stop, Ferguson! I'm off behind that car, Ferguson, with your hands up. Don't make me kill you. Don't make me kill you. I'll circle behind him. Careful, Sergeant. He's going to run. Nice shooting, Sergeant. Yeah. We got you for killing Eddie Manning, Ferguson. You might as well tell us about Walsh. You did it, didn't you? Yeah. We'll radio for an ambulance, Sergeant. Stay with him. Come on, Harrington. We've got to get Lynch in from that ledge. Careful now, Lynch. Easy. Easy. Reach your hand out now. Grab him, Harrington. Uh, 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 I got him. Pull together. Uh, yeah? Mm. All right. Then. You're safe now. I was so, so far down. I didn't want to die, but I couldn't stand being locked up again. I... How about coming with us? We'll get you something to eat. No. no. I don't want anything except just... To be able to open that door and, and go. All right, man. It's all yours. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, I'll get it. No, Harrington. Let him open it himself. I just wanted to help him, please. You know. This is David Bryan. I hope you enjoy this case from the files of Mr. District Attorney. I'll be back in just a moment after this message from our sponsor. the star of Mr. District Attorney, David Bryan, with a word about the program you have just heard. You probably recall the case, that exceedingly and fortunately rare specimen of a criminal policeman we call Fogelson was tried and convicted for both killings. Frankie Lynch finished out his parole honestly, got his job at the bakery and is still employed there in a supervisory capacity. Now, this is David Bryan inviting you to join us when we present our next case based on the facts of crime from the file of Mr. District Attorney. Mr. District Attorney was originated by Phillips H. Lawrence. again next week for an evening of old time radio on return with us now from your public radio station KERA FM Dallas what do you like about KERA FM What don't you like about it? 
All we ask is that you let us know. Maybe you'd like to see a few things changed around. Maybe you have some suggestions as to the programming. Maybe everything we're doing is just fine with you. That's the way it seems to us anyway. You see, we need to hear from you. We need to hear your opinions and your remarks. This is your public radio station, so take an interest in it. Maybe you're sick to death of Gene Shepard or Lum and Abner. Or maybe you'd like to hear more jazz or less jazz or more or less classical music. Think about it. Just let us know. Get in touch with your public radio station. After all, that's what it's all about, isn't it?